today we're going to be talking about Ironheart. We're going to go over a little bit of the history of the brand. Then we're going to go into their denim fabrics. Then we're going to look at all of their fits. And if the video is not six hours long by then, we're going to look at some of the other things that they make in denim. No other brand in this little niche salvage denim world that we all live in has managed to carve out quite such a cult following the way that Ironheart has. It seems that after you enlist in the, the Ironheart army, yes, that's really what they call themselves. After you enlist in the Ironheart army, then that's it, you're, you're in it for life. And I think this speaks volumes about the, the denim, the cuts, and the, the quality of, of all the garments that they make. And it also says really a lot about the, the community that they've managed to, to foster around the brand. Works Incorporated, which is the, the parent company of Ironheart the brand, it was founded back in 2002 by Shinichi Haraki. Haraki-san had been in the denim industry for, for quite a while by then and he intimately knew his way around a pair of jeans. He actually started off with Edwin, like way, way, way back when as a pattern cutter, and worked his way up through the company. And uh, at some point, he took all of this knowledge and he started consulting. And it was just the next logical step. He took all of this, this knowledge, this know-how that he built up over the years, mixed it with his passion for motorcycles, and created a brand. The focus was, was heavy denim and really durable fabrics, all created for and, and, and aimed at the Japanese motorcycle community. And this was working very, very well in Japan. But, as luck would have it, three years later, Giles Padmore, he was just sending out emails to Japanese denim brands in the hope that one of them was going to reply. He had this crazy notion that the Japanese denim was going to do very, very well with a wider audience. All his emails went unanswered aside from one, aside from Ironheart. I mean, it was just pure and utter luck that Haraki-san at the time had an intern that could speak English. So, emails were sent back and forth, flights were booked. You got a toothbrush? We're going Japan. Do you hear that, Doug? I'm coming! Japan. Orders were made and the rest is history. Giles and his wife Paula brought Ironheart to an international stage. And in doing so, they, they laid the foundations for the, the community that's built up around about the brand. They did this with, with a network of just the very best denim stores around the world, a good web shop, and possibly most importantly, setting up the Ironheart Forum, which seems to be one of the few remaining forums that's still dedicated to salvage denim. Okay, denim. They have a lot of denim. 24 as far as I can tell. Actually no, 23 because one of them's a duck canvas. Anyway, they've got 23 denim fabrics ranging from 12 ounces, which is used for the shirting, right up to the heavy boy of 25 ounces. Now, we're not going to go through them all. There's a really, really good rundown of all of the fabrics over on the Ironheart site. There's a link to that down below in the description. Today, we're just going to talk about their 21 and their 25 ounce fabric because I think that, that that's their most, most famous and possibly the most important ones. First up, where it all began, the 21 ounce denim. I mean, I, I think the Samurai had done the heavier denim before, up to 19 ounces, but as far as I can tell, as far as I know, Ironheart was the first ones to break that 20 ounce mark. I mean, this was done with practicality in mind. It, this is a brand for bikers and a heavier denim was gonna provide more protection against the elements. Maybe not protection in the, in the event of a spill, but certainly more protection from the elements than, than say a pair of, of Levi's. And it's become Ironheart's signature denim and it makes up a good deal of the range. Its success lies in the fact that, that as heavy as it is, it's still remarkably soft and breathable once it's broken in. I would say that this denim is actually much more comfortable than some super slubby rough midweight denims. It also fades absolutely beautiful. I mean, just just type in 21 ounce iron heart fades into Google and you're just going to get an avalanche of beautifully faded examples of these jeans. Ironheart's USP, it was heavy denim and doing that heavy denim better than anybody else, at least, at least back then. So why not just double down and make even heavier denim? Well, I mean, aside from the sheer impracticality of wearing a denim that heavy, there's also some serious complications when it comes to, to weaving and then sewing that fabric into a pair of jeans. But it does exist, so how did this come about? Well, the whole thing started when Giles and Roger Hatt from VMC down in Switzerland, they were having a bit of a chat late at night, so you can really imagine. Eh. Roger wanted something, 
something special for BMC's 25th anniversary. And despite the fact that Haraki-san had absolutely said he was never going to go above 21 ounces, with a little bit of convincing, he accepted the challenge. And what resulted was, of course, that, that famous 25 ounce denim. They used all of the, the techniques that they'd learned from creating the 21 ounce denim and just made it, made it heavier. So it was still very, very soft and very breathable when it broke in. But given the, the heavy weight of this denim, some of the most remarkable fade examples from Ironheart do come from this 25 ounce denim. Okay, so those are the two most important, most, most milestone and, and most famous fabrics, denim fabrics from Ironheart. But what do they do with this denim? Well, they make it into jeans and jackets and shirts and bags and shoes. But for now, we're just gonna look at the jeans. Right now, there seems to be seven or eight separate fits in the Ironheart lineup. In numerical order, as far as I can remember, there is the 461 and the 463, there's the 555, there's the 634, there's the 666, there's the 777, and then there is the 888. That's seven, I'm missing one. Oh, the 1955. And all of these can be divided into five separate categories. Straight, slim, very slim, tapered and boot cut. In the straight category, we have the 634 and the 1955. The 634 was the original cut, the OG from Ironheart, and it still remains their signature model. It's loosely based on one of my favorites, the, the 1966 501 from Levi's, and that's a, a straight cut with, uh, with a medium rise, and just the slightest taper from the knee down. It's really, it's a brilliant all-rounder. And the 1955, as the name suggests, is based on the 1955 Levi's 501. So a higher rise and a much fuller top block than the 634. Moving on to the slim cuts. The slim cuts is anything with the 666 in the model number. It is similar in rise to the 634, but just slimmer everywhere else. Now the 777, that could be also kind of considered a slim cut, but we're gonna talk about that when we get to the tapers. Before that, we've got to cover the super slims, the 555s, and these are tight. I, I don't know, in the heavier denim, I really don't know how the guys can do it, but they, they do do it, and on the right frame, these look really, really great. They've got a much higher rise than the 634, and if you notice, I'm using the 634 as the benchmark here because it is the, the Ironheart, Ironheart standard. So they've got a higher rise than the 634s and they're just much slimmer everywhere else. Okay, now onto the taper. The tapered are anything with 777 or 888 in the model number. The 777 is pretty much the 666, so a, a similar rise to the 634, but much slimmer overall, but then with a taper, more of a taper than the 666 from the knee down. Okay, that's that's far too complicated. The 777 is a slim taper, simple as that. Incidentally, the 777 is my choice of fit when it comes to iron heart. And when my fat ass slims down a little bit, I'll be back in these. Shout out to Eric who actually donated these to, to the channel. And also, shout out to Duke who donated this pair of worn 634s to the channel. There's gonna be a review or maybe a deeper dive into this particular pair at some point in the future, because this pair is from the very, very early days of Ironheart, and it's actually, it's got a secret, and I probably should do a review of the 777s, because it's a great pair of jeans. Okay, but back to the tapered. Included in the tapered is the 888. That has got a higher rise than the 777s, and it's got more of a taper from the knee down. Now this is a really, really great fit, overall in the world of slim taper jeans, and it's the one that works very, very well for the girls. Right, last but not least, boot cut. This is any pair with the model number of 461 or 463. As I said before, I still don't know what the difference is. Maybe you can enlighten me, Ironheart Army guys. Um, just leave a comment down below. Boot cuts are tricky, at least for me. They've got these, this weird kind of like, early noughties connotations that I have to get over. But when they do work, they work very, very well. And actually, important to note here, a boot cut is not a flare. A flare flares out down at the bottom. A boot cut, it tapers in towards the knee, 
and then opens out towards the hem. The Ironheart boot cuts, they have a, a relatively low rise and really quite a tight knee. And down at the hem, it doesn't really go crazy. It really is a great example of this style. And as I said, when it works, it really works well. Okay, so that's an overview of the jeans. But while we're here, we may as well look at the jackets. Ironheart do make a, a lot of jackets, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna stick with the denim jackets. Most popular seems to be this modified type three. This is just a, an amazing take on the classic Levi's trucker style. It's, it's more contemporary. It's made a little bit longer and they put hand warmer pockets on. And it seems to come in most, if not all of the denims that Ironheart offer. It comes lined, it comes unlined, and also in a bunch of other fabrics as well. We've got, we've got duck, we've got, we've got whipcord, even in leather. There's also a type two, but currently it only seems to come in this 16 ounce slubby denim. It does look great though. It seems to be a little bit slimmer in the body and a little bit longer as well. So it's basically what they've done with the type three. They've just made a contemporary version of this classic style. I do remember there being a type one from really a long time ago. I think it was a collaboration with with the now closed store, Vasper and Son. But yeah, there's nothing in the lineup at the moment. Although it is mentioned in the category, so maybe in the future we're gonna see one. We've also got Ironheart's take on another couple of classics, but this time from Lee. We've got the Lee Rider and we've got the Storm Rider. So the Lee Rider that is unlined and the Storm Rider is lined with a cord collar. Again, these are just great contemporary takes on the classic styles. Keeping with Ironheart's Origins as a brand for, for bikers, there is a kind of cafe racer style just in denim. Clean, collarless, zip closure with a by swing back. Last but not least, is Ironheart's version of a chore coat. And as much as I'm really not into the whole chore coat thing, I have to say Ironheart has made a nice job here. There's great little details that are a nod to the, the old original chore coats. Okay, that's us covered the jeans and the jackets. And I, I am very aware that there's probably some obscure versions that I have missed out and I'm probably on the shit list from the more militant branch of the Ironheart army. So, tell you what, let, let's do this together. If I have missed something essential, then please leave it in the comments below. But again, please be nice. Now, Ironheart does throw their denim at a bunch of other things, but you guys know I have my, my reservations about things being made in denim that have got no business being made in denim. But yeah, I have to say somehow, Ironheart get away with it better than others. Bags, shoulder bags, which are actually fucking great, and even shoes. They're, they're really not bad. Right, that is hopefully a complete guide to Ironheart selvage denim. Fits, fabrics, and other bits. And as I said, if I did miss anything out, then please just let me know in the comments below. And Ironheart really do have a lot of amazing things besides denim these days. It's, it's, it's worth checking out. I've left links down in the description to, to the relevant sites, so that's UK, EU, and US. And when you're on your way down there, if you can do all that liking and subscribing thing, that's always welcome. So very, very welcome. Oh, and sign up for the good news, no news newsletter. Honestly, it's fun. There's a link in the description to that as well. And that is something to say, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope all of you are happy and healthy out there. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other. And I'm gonna see you, well, I'm gonna see you when I see you. Thing is, the kiddo's coming along any day now. And on that note, things are gonna be going dark on the channel for a few weeks. I'm just gonna take some time off to be with the family, to learn a whole host of new skills, like how to hold a newborn, how to change a diaper, how to only breathe through my mouth when I'm changing that diaper, and how to survive off about two hours of sleep. Oh, and if any of you have been wondering why we have got two matches in the corner, no, we are not starting up a heroin den. Uh, we ordered a new bed, uh, I think four months ago, and still they've not been able to deliver it.